So in yesterday's class, I just want to have a quick recap. We have seen what is a projection and how a projection affects our drawing. Like how do we represent a particular object? The whole, like the whole point of any drawing is objects will always be in 3D, whatever you take, be it mechanical or construction. Our whole perspective when we uh, try to draft is no matter how much, uh, like there are multiple 3D softwares also in this world, but no matter how much we do in 3D, finally it should be put on in paper, right? That is called drafting. So what we do are at the end of our uh, design uh, considerations are you have to present the 3D model in the piece of paper that is called projection. Like uh, you can see a plane right here, right? It has both axes. So ultimately we have to project that object or any anything into paper, which will be 2D form. That will be our ultimate aim when we are drafting. So, okay, we have seen what are the planes and we have seen the three different uh, uh, views we get. So whatever you draw in AutoCAD, we have only three different uh, aspects of it. One is top, top angle, the other one is front angle, the other one is side either left side or right side. So these are the main three object, three aspects of any design, be it mechanical or architecture. In mechanical, we call top face, front face, right, right or left side face. What about in uh, architecture? We call them as elevations, okay? Front elevation, side elevation, and top elevation, bottom elevation. These are called elevations in architecture. In mechanical, these, the, the terminology use, is used is as face, front, top, right, or left. Okay, we've seen first angle projection. First angle projection is placing our uh, object or whatever the design we are doing in the first quadrant of uh, the graph. This is what we use in India. This is what uh, most of the countries use, except for US, which use the third angle projection where they place their objects over here. It has its advantages and this has this uh, its advantages, but it is what it is. We use this first angle projection wherein top projection will be at the bottom and the left side projection will be on the right side and the right side projection will be on the left side, which means like if, if you have drawn a front view like this, it's a side view, like right, if you are seeing from right side, it will be on the left side. If you are seeing, seeing from the left side, it will be placed on the right side like this. And always remember top angle, like how this thing looks from top will be represented at the bottom. That is what a first angle projection is. And we have also seen multiple tools like uh, how to draw polyline, how to draw a ray, how to draw a construction line, multiple points, such uh, such uh, commands. We have also seen how to set a limit. And we've seen uh, certain modifying uh, commands like uh, how to move, rotate, copy, and also how to give an array or fillet or chamfer. So this is what study session is. So let's continue today's session with two more important settings, that is drafting settings and properties bar. Let's see what those are in AutoCAD, okay? So we have seen uh, what UN stands for. UN stands for units. So whatever the project we are in, the first step we have to do is we have to set the units. Whatever our discipline is, depending on our discipline, we have to change the units. Sometimes what happens is even after changing the units over here, it may not be reflected in our drawing. Sometimes it happens. So then we have to go for EIM STY. There is a command called DIMS3. You just don't have to worry about this command right now, but just go to this command, hit enter. Then you have to go for modify. Here in the modify, you'll see something called primary units. In the primary units also, the units should match whatever units we have uh, taken in the units. Like uh, if you are uh, choosing decimal in the units, here in the dim tree, you have to also choose primary units. If it's okay, if it's the same, then you don't have to worry, hit okay, hit close, okay? After that, so yesterday we have seen like uh, the first class and second class, right? As soon as I draw a line or something like this, then if I want to draw one more line, if I touch this point, there's a square. Sometimes it will, it may not be visible, right? That is called snap settings, which is uh, how does this uh, line know that it's it has a center line? Like for example, if I take one more line, as soon as I scroll down, 
as soon as i reach to the center it will show a triangle which means that is a center point of that particular line so how does that line know that that line knows with the help of a setting called drafting settings that is ds just try to remember this uh, uh, shortcut ds so in the drafting settings you have to always uh, Uh, remember, you have to always switch on all the snap settings. If you switch off the snap settings, you will not see those grips, what we call as. So you have seen this uh, boxes, right? These are called snaps or grips. You will not find these grips if you are uh, switch off those snap settings. That can be accessed via our DS, that is shortcut. If I press DS and enter, I'll get uh, these snap settings. This should be always on and also object snap. So in the object snap also, make sure that you have to switch on everything here. The polar tracking is for circles. Like say, for example, if I type C enter, right? And if I take like L enter, as soon as I try to draw a line, there is a, a small indication for me. Wherever I go, there is a small indication that represent that that is the center of that given circle. That is called as polar tracking. Those things, if you want to activate, you have to go for polar tracking and switch on this polar tracking. So same for object snap. So uh, this object snap should always and ideally be switched on. This will give us uh, to determine like our endpoints, midpoints, centers, and everything. Okay. Make sure that it will be uh, switched on always. So one more thing is, so we have our line, okay? There will be certain properties for this line, which we'll uh, read further in this class. To know those properties, we have to go for PR, that is settings for properties. This is a tab which indicates whatever the properties we are going to give for any element. Like say, for example, if I select on this uh, line, it shows the line's uh, length. Okay, it shows lines length. There are other properties also, which we'll uh, discuss further in this class. All these uh, elements or all these uh, properties of this given object, whatever it is, let's say if it is circle, right? For this circle, what is its radius? What is its diameter? What is its circumference? Every information of this particular object that is circle will be displayed in our properties bar. So how do you access properties bar? Just if it is not there, just simply type PR and press enter. You have your properties bar like this. You can move or you can just change it anywhere you want or you can close it whenever it's not required. Okay. So, and, and uh, yesterday we just uh, did not discuss one more uh, uh, option that is offset. So, for example, I just wanted to draw a line like this and I'll switch on F8 that is ortho. So, if I switch off F8, you can see the line can travel in any direction. As soon as I switch on F8, the line will travel only in horizontal or vertical direction. Let's say we have a line like this. And I don't want to copy this line or I don't want to draw this line one more time. There is another option to draw the same line or to reproduce the same line. That is by offsetting. So where do you find offset option is? You can offset, you can find it over here or you can just type OF. That is a uh, uh, shortcut of offset. And then you have to give the offset distance from uh, here to in how much distance you want this same object to be replicated. Let's say I want this for 10 units. Enter. So then select the object. You have your offset. You can place any direction. And then you can place this object multiple times as as long as you are in this object setting or offset setting, you can offset multiple number of times the same object. It, uh, it saves us a lot of time. All right, so that uh, that is offset. And uh, let's uh, draw a rectangle and show uh, and see what offset does uh, to this rectangle. Let's see, we have a rectangle like this. And I press OF, enter. And again, I'll take uh, 10 units as my offset distance. And then as soon as I go to this offset and select this uh, object, you can see if I go inwards, there is a, another uh, rectangle. If I go outwards, there is one more rectangle. So 
is it saves a lot of time for me. Uh, uh, instead of drawing the same rectangle again with the specified external or internal distance for this rectangle, I just selected offset and it, it gives me the exact object with an offset distance. Let's see how this uh, offset works for circle. I, I go for C, enter, just give any uh, dimension like 20. Now I just wanted to offset, OF, enter, and then I'll give offset distance of 20, 20 yards. Hit on this object, whichever you want to offset, and just drag it externally or internally. If it is not possible to offset internally, it will not form. You can see there is an error mark, which means you cannot offset that particular uh, object which means you cannot offset internally because the radius is not sufficient for it to minimize its size. As soon as I go outside, you can see it's offsetting because for that given radius, for that given distance, it is possible. Okay, so with these options are ready. Let me just quickly uh, uh, draw a sample file so that you will get a, an understanding. Instead of going to further topics, let's just uh, let's just have a Sample drawing. So I have a sample drawing over here. You can see uh, it's, a, it's a simple drawing. Like uh, this is an object, a mechanical object, but uh, don't worry, anyone can practice this thing. So what it has is it has a length, it has a width, and it is closing like this. So this is an object. We want to replicate this object in AutoCAD. It has dimensions. Just don't worry about this exact size because we have dimensions. What we have to consider is we should replicate the object's dimension exactly in AutoCAD. That should be our goal. So let me take AutoCAD. What I can do is I can just drag this. I can uh, set side by side and I can draw. Or what I can do, this is difficult, right? Uh, seeing something and, uh, and then coming back to AutoCAD and then drawing. So there is an option for that also. What you can do is you can jo just go to insert. You have an option for importing this PDF. Just one moment, please. So how can you import uh, this particular PDF into AutoCAD? So one second, someone is facing a problem to join the session. OK, so uh, this option with this option, you can in import any PDF file into AutoCAD. This was not there until the recent also 2016 version also. It was not there. It was there, but it was not uh, as good as uh, uh, the recent versions. So with this option, what we can do is we can import any PDF. And then we can start uh, working on that particular PDF. So let me just go to PDF import. Click on this PDF import. So this is what our file is. I'll hit open. Here, after hitting import, there are multiple options. So you, you have to uh, make sure what options you are going to select. So uh, I'm not going in depth because we are not we have not covered much of these topics. So make sure that you set the scale one is to one because whatever the scale is there, that should be replicated over here because this is a mechanical drawing. And if you are uh, making an architecture drawing and you know the scale of this architecture file, then only you should scale it. Or else uh, you, you don't have to worry about the scale. After importing the drawing also, you can set the scale, which we will see in the further classes. So you have to make sure what the scale is. Uh, you have to uh, set the proper scale. And also you have to uh, switch on the solid fills, which means whenever you are uh, importing a PDF file, which was an AutoCAD file at the beginning, at the, like. Uh, you can create an AutoCAD file and then export it to PDF, right? In that case, what happens is whatever 
uh, like say they are filling this AutoCAD with a layer. That layer has a solid element. That solid element will be directly uh, coming here as a solid fill. So you have to switch on the solid fill also. Also, if you are uh, converting AutoCAD to PDF, sometimes there will be different layers. Uh, we'll discuss layers today's concept. So this layers also you have to always use it if you have the PDF so that uh, it will uh, be easy for us to work. We'll see this. Uh, just don't worry about these things. We'll see each and every aspect that is over here. Just for now, remember you can import a, a PDF file into AutoCAD so that you can start working on this uh, given PDF file. OK, this is what our AutoCAD file is. Now I just wanted to recreate everything that is present over here. First thing is. I know like there is no correct way or proper way. The, the, the only golden rule in AutoCAD is the correct way is whichever way you find comfortable and also whichever way that is fast. I mean, you think it is fast to you. There are multiple ways like I can go to L enter. I can just draw five feet, five units, whatever the units you have, and then you can uh, give 1.5 and two as per your uh, like whatever way you feel comfortable, right? So let me just uh, draw this uh, image seeing the dimensions. OK, first thing is, so this is our image. Let me just quickly change the color. OK, so that uh, we can differentiate from the dimensions. These are our dimensions. This is our object and we have to draw this object. The first dimension I have is I have. Five. Five units, so first let me draw a. Whatever unit you are selecting, if it is in mm, you can draw in an mm. If it is in meters, you can draw in meters. The second dimension I am having is 1.5. L enter. From here, I'm going to start. I'm just giving 1.5 enter. And then like here, you can start from this side and you can start if you are comfortable for starting from this side, you can start or if you want to finish from this side, you can. So what I'm going to see do is now. So this is 1.5. This is also 1.5, right? Because the dimension is same. This both sides. Instead of drawing one more time, what I can do is you can just copy. Give your first point, give your second point. So you have saved drawing line one more time. That is how you improvise the uh, drawing. You can save time. The ultimate aim will be like how much fast you can work in this um, completing this particular model. And then I have one unit of this distance. I'll enter. Just type one enter. And then after that, you can see. This length is 1.5. This length is 2.5, which means this length will be. Can anyone tell what this length will be? Hello. Hello. One meter. Yeah, one. If it is in meters, meter. One. If it is in millimeter, one millimeter. Okay. So that will be one. So let me draw one. One. Enter. After that, we can see this distance will be automatically one because we have given one. And then, then this distance is 0.5. Let's take a enter, or you can just press spacebar. You 0.5 enter. After that, you can just co simply copy this because. The same thing. Copy paste. Just one second, please. Hello.
uh, hi sachin uh, are you uh, audible hello yeah are you audible actually sir Am there was some problem i don't know what happened there okay maybe there is a network issue from your end just try to mute and concentrate in the class okay if you have any doubt we can discuss later okay 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 um, sorry for the interruption so after that i have given 0.5 and then we have uh, drawn this or we have copied that then the next length is 1.5 press space bar sorry space bar is another command l enter you can have your length as 1.5 enter the next point is again we have our one that is not changed because this is also one this is also one l enter one enter the next dimension here is 0.75 let's draw that's 0.75 0.75 enter and then what we can do is we can copy this thing you can just c enter cp enter copy this now you don't have to look for dimension you can just connect to both ends now you can see this is similar to this after that if you want to look the image like this what you can do is select all press j enter okay press j enter now you can see this is a image uh, the image is similar to this image so that's how you draw this file i'll be sharing in uh, in whatsapp so that you can practice let's just quickly move to one more exercise after that we'll uh, start start today's session a bit more complicated one just go to insert pdf import pdf import second image again here also i just uh, hit okay now i just want everyone to observe this image first we have seen every command to draw this particular given image what we have to do is we have to paste it in a way that we can make uh, like draw this image in a faster way okay so you cannot exactly like uh, you can draw exactly but there are alternative ways or the much of, i mean the way you can draw much faster with using additional lines which uh, can be erased later like uh, for example i just wanted to have a line like this first this i'll erase in the later uh, because after drawing i don't need this line i just uh, want to take this for reference and one more vertical line like this so you can see there are four circles total uh, six circles 1 2 okay 3 4 5 6 and there are four fillers so what we have to do is we have to draw 1 2 3 4 5 6 six circles and four fillers in total all right for that let me begin with drawing this circle so this circle's dimension i have is 3.5 units and this is diameter this is radius r is for radius this phi symbol is for diameter okay so i have one diameter and one radius so if i want the diameter of this given section i just multiply it to 2 which is 5 so this diameter is 5 and this radius is 1.425 which means the diameter is 2.5 and this diameter is 1 and this this and this is similar which means this diameter is also 1 so these are the things i know let me start with drawing this first circle which is of 3.5 diameter i'll go to home go to circle we have the diameter right select the diameter i'll give 3.5 enter the next space bar this time i have to give 5 right why radius 2.5 we have discussed right you can draw circle with two elements if you know radius you can select radius if you know diameter you can select select the diameters okay okay now i want to draw this given circle and this given circle 
and the refer only reference i have is from this line to the center of this circle is 3 units then i'll what i do is i'll just draw a line or i can offset this thing o enter so you can yes unit uh, you can give the units as 3 as soon as i give the units to 3 i have this line duplicated okay now we have a reference point to draw both the lines after that i have to draw the diameter of one feet one or uh, one units go to circle take the one unit diameter draw one don't worry whether it touches or not because anyway we are going to erase everything the next thing is we have to draw r 1.25 circle radius now what i can do is select both the things i can go to mirror this is my mirror axis i just don't want to erase these things now you can see i have achieved the shape right this circle this circle this circle this circle this both the circles now only thing missing is i have to make a fillet of these two circles and the fillet radius is r 1.5 Here, yeah. just go to fillet, fillet, select the radius. After the radius selection, you have to give one point five as a radius. Now select this circle, this circle, size bar, which means you have to re you can repeat the same command. Select this circle, this circle. Again size bar, this circle, this circle. Again size bar. Okay, now we have almost similar identical except for this extra lines. So I have to remove this extra lines first. Just remove. remove. Now we have removed the extra lines. What we have to do is we have to make this drawing uh, like uh, more uh, presentable, which means we have to delete all these things. For deleting, what I am going to do is press T R double enter. Just go anywhere which you have to delete. It will automatically show you a uh, into symbol, which means you can delete that given entity like this. All right. Now we have our given image. The same. Just don't uh, consider these things because anyway we did not cover the annotations. In the annotations category, we'll mark all these dimensions later stage. Just try to concentrate on the uh, figure. So this is what we have, and this is what we have done exactly. As per the dimensions, you can check anywhere. Like say, for example, I just go to measure. If I go to this, uh, you can see the radius is 1.5. That is what our given radius is. So whatever the dimension I'm taking right now. It's a temporary dimension, as I've said yesterday. There are two kinds of dimensions. One is temporary dimension, the other one is permanent dimension. Permanent dimension will stay with your drawing, but you don't have. If you don't want your dimension to stay, you just have to measure something. Then you can go for temporary dimension, which will be in your utilities. In the utilities section, the measure you can measure anything with temporary dimension. Let's say I want to measure uh, this center point to this center point. Which should be of three units. Center point to center point. You can see it's exactly of three units. Now, I can conclude that I have drawn as per the requirements, and also the units are correct. Okay, everyone. Anyone has any doubts in this uh, particular figure? Hello. No, sir. Yeah. Okay. So I just give the, uh, these two practice files so that you can uh, practice. First, try to install AutoCAD, and then, uh, as I have said, just go to Insert, PDF Import. You can import any file if you have any files also with you. You can just try to import that file, and with the basic commands, whatever the commands we have over here, try to practice the files. Okay. Let's uh, move on. Uh, okay, we have seen what trap settings is, and uh, we have seen what uh, properties bar is. 
Next is we have to uh, we have also seen uh, in the dimension style you have to go for primary units. Sometimes if the units of what you've chosen is not matching over here, you have to manage and you have to correct it. Hit OK and then you have to modify. Uh, you have to make it as current. After changing over here, just hit current. Set current so that you'll have that units matching to your given units. So that's it for a uh, uh, dimension style. The next is the most important topic in AutoCAD, properties toolbar. So the, these topics which we are going to discuss today are the most important or are building blocks of AutoCAD. So we'll see properties toolbar and also layers. So uh, and uh, layers. So until this topic we'll cover today. OK. So let's see what properties toolbar is. So we have seen draw commands. We have seen modify commands. We will see annotations tomorrow. This also will cover today. This will cover latest classes, but later classes. This part we are going to see today. What is property? As I said, you have drawn a line, and that line's property will be displayed in your properties bar. What the line is, how how much thickness the line is, all these things can be seen in the properties bar okay now let's see what this properties uh, tab actually does is in the ribbon bar as soon as i get i hit uh, this layer by layer you can see there is a circle right that circle represents color until now we have drawn only in the same color white color but what if i want to draw this line in red color you have to select this Icon after that by layer is there, right? In that, you have to choose any color you want to give to your line. So, this is your red line. Like, say, for example, I have drawn circle and I want this circle in blue color. Here, in this drop down, you can select any color of which you want that particular object or element to be that will be turned to that given color. So, that is your color. So, color is simple. You just have to like draw anything and then just go to that particular uh, color, whichever you want to assign, select that color. That lay that object will be in that color. So only color will not be that much of use. So you have to associate with something else that we'll discuss further. The next thing is something more important that is line weight. Let's see what line weight is. Line weight and line type are uh, two similar uh, aspects which denotes something uh, very important. Like you can, whatever we have drawn until now, that is a small line, uh, like a circle or a, a rectangle or a square or a normal polyline, whatever we have drawn, we have drawn a simple line. Every line or every uh, line we have drawn in AutoCAD, it has certain meaning. Like uh, in this slide, you can see if I draw a small line like this, continuous thick line, which means it should be outline of a object. Whatever the object we have drawn, it should be an outline. If we are draw drawing dimension, right? It should be in a thin line. OK, like that, there are certain properties for every line. Like where do you use dotted line? And where do you use this type of line? Like this is called as chain thin line. These lines are used whenever there is a symmetry. And whenever the, there is an object and that object is not visible in that view, like say there is a circle and the underside of the circle, there is a hole, which is not visible in our view. We will denote that in a dotted line, dashed line, right? So just remember whenever you see dotted line in the drawing, it is going to be a hidden, which means in that given view, that line is not visible. So there are certain properties like this. Uh, I have a a word document with me. I'll share that document also so that uh, you'll have a better understanding of uh, this. So I'll just try to share this. Uh, with you. So what what line you are taking? 
what is the thickness of your line and what this line represents in our drawing like uh, if you are taking a type a line which we have seen here a type a line continuous thick line what does this line mean where this line is used normally in a, any setup in any construction industry or in any mechanical industry the uh, the industry has its own standards and the company has also its own standards their own standards okay this type of line we have to use for this application this type of line we have to use for this application so they have predefined set of rules depending on those rules only they will choose the lines and they will format it and they will uh, tell us to use this line this particular line for that application so how do you select the line over here like say uh, whatever line we are drawing here it is of same thickness only if you want to change the thickness or type of line that is here you have to go for the line type over here that is in the properties bar click by layer drop down so you have only one type of line that is why we are seeing only one type of line by default you will see only one type of line over here you have to hit other as soon as you go for other here also you have only two type of lines one is continuous i mean there is only one type of line that is continuous then you have to go for load so here there are different iso standard lines as you know every line has a standard we were discussing right so each line represents something and that is that has an iso code also so our companies whatever the design companies are in uh, architectural companies if you are going to abide by those standards we will choose so if you are using iso dot this line we will assign a certain function like if this particular dot is visible in our drawing it represents something like that we have to assign our people would have assigned so these are different types of lines that are there like uh, there is a center dot line so this line mostly will be used for grids if you are having a, a construction right if you are uh, drawing a construction project and you are having grids for column placement you will use this type of line the dash dot line this is normally called dash dot line which means you have a dash and you have a dot so like if you are having a fence if you are having gas line in your project you will use this gas line there is something called hidden line right as we have discussed hidden line is used is used whenever you are uh, representing something which is not visible in that given view so you have to take this hidden line so like that we have multiple lines in our uh, project depending on our requirement we have to choose the line so let me just take this iso dash line okay so this will be in our project not everything will be loaded in our project because our projects uh, like length of the file will be increased so what autocad does is it will restrict the amount of entities that is in our project by default whatever we we want to load in the project we have to load it by here not only lines there are other aspects also like say uh, we have imported pdf right now right that will such stuff will not be there by default in your project because if you add everything in the project the file size will be much bigger and it it will be showing its effects on our software performance i'll just hit load this dash okay we have already loaded so i'm just hit thing okay now i have loaded that uh, particular uh, dotted line how do you access the line just hit go to line now i have a uh, line command then you have to choose this in the line types you have to choose your loaded line so this is what the line we have loaded right now right hit that line and once you draw it not it, it's not visible because once again so One second, please. Let me load one more line. Um,
take one more new file. So uh, there may be certain errors, uh, like the, this is common for AutoCAD. Sometimes the system does not respond. You have to take a new file and try, or you have to uh, close it and uh, turn on once again. So uh, this is common uh, thing in AutoCAD. Let me um, load this file. So we have this dotted line. I have selected this line. I'm going for line. You see, there is a dotted line, right? So uh, just don't worry whenever you get such errors. It's it's common for AutoCAD. Sometimes the changes will not reflect. You have to always try to uh, regen. There is a command called regen, which means Refresh in AutoCAD. If you face any errors like that, just try to region or try to close AutoCAD and try to open it once again. You will have your uh, settings come back, come back again. So what I'm uh, trying to do here is I'm trying to change the type of line, whatever line we have drawn. So up until now, we have drawn only continuous line that is of straight, straight line and line is continuous without any uh, breaks in that line. So now let me draw one more li line type that is a uh, dotted line. So how do you uh, draw the dotted line is you have to select whatever you have to do. Let me like take to draw a circle. After selecting your circle in the line types here, you have to select your dotted line. So hit anywhere and give your uh, dimension. You have your dotted line selected. So this is same for everything. Like, uh, let me load one more uh, line type. Let's say uh, we have loaded a zigzag line. This line may have a purpose which we don't know, or uh, you may assign some purpose. Like, if you see this particular line type, it has to represent, represent something. I hit the line command, and you can select that, and then you have your zigzag. Line type. All right. So that is what line type is. Line type is very important because it determines what that particular function of that line. And also, as we have discussed, I'll just draw a line one more time over here. Now let me go for properties. You can see as I hit uh, properties bar, we can see the type of the line, its thickness. And line type. So we have covered one more category in the properties bar. We know we can see uh, its length. Okay, now one more entity is added that is, we can see the line type also in AutoCAD. So if you change this uh, line type, so uh, let me go to others. So you can assign or rename this line type also. Like uh, this is a pattern, right? So if you want to uh, like rename this zigzag pattern to uh, say uh, fence, so you want to uh, what you call uh, represent this zigzag pattern to fence. As soon as I hit OK, if I select this line, you can see this is an ISO standard line. This line represents something. In the description of the design, uh, when you uh, complete the whole project, the description you can display like this line displays a fence, or you can change the line over here. Like this line displays a fencing. So that will be easy for us to describe whatever we are drawing. In further stages, it will be easy for us to, by seeing the line itself, we can uh, conclude okay, this line is fencing, this line is a wall. If you have a thick line, that, that can be denoted as an outer wall. If you have a thin line, that can be denoted as an inner wall. If you have a dotted line, you can represent it as a, something it is hidden. Like that, uh, depending on your project, you can set the parameters in this line types. One more thing is, okay, we have line type. We can also reduce or increase the thickness of the given line also. Like say, we have drawn this line. This straight line, or this is the dotted line. Let me make it straight line. Okay. Now this is a, a specific a standard thickness. This this line has a thickness. Thickness means when you print this line, as we have seen in the sample uh, 
let me open the sample file right you can see this line is of different thickness to this line right this line is more thick than the dimension line that is present over here why why have they done like this because they want to highlight this drawing first and then only our eyes should move on this dimension so whatever that is thick normally our attention goes to that uh, particular element right that is uh, how you generate attention and also that is how you you say symbolically that this is what important in the drawing in order to make that happen you have to go for this line weight so line weight is also similar to line type depending on our uh, project depending on our uh, industry standard we have to choose so this is what mm is you can see the mm right here right this mm represents how much thickness that line should be or will be when you take it as a print form so if you select 0.18 the final form will be it will be of 0.018 mm thickness in the print so every dimension you see here is how much uh, dimension it will be in the final print of your drawing you can see i have changed its dimension it's reflected over here like if i change this dimension it's it's not if it is not reflected what you have to do is you have to go to this line weight settings okay just switch on this display line weight hit okay now you can see i have drawn a line and i have given line weight also let me just draw one more time you can see i have drawn line now if i change uh, thickness of this given line it will automatically change earlier it did not change because in the line weight settings we did not switch on this display line weight okay now if you want the line weight to be displayed in your project or in your uh, drawing what you have to do is you have to go to line weight settings okay and then you have to switch on this display line weight now whatever the line weight is you are selecting will be displayed here why is this important this is important because when you want to highlight highlight an external wall or you want to highlight some given area so those things you can highlight by increasing its thickness in this line weight and also end of the project sometimes if your project construction is uh, following all the standards you will mention line weights also like this line weight denotes this thing if you are using say 0.05 mm thickness of line weight it which means whenever you find 0.05 thickness in your project you can assume that that uh, denotes it is an inner wall like if you are using 0.03 thickness it it is a inner cylinder thickness like that like say outer cylinder thickness of a piston i'm just, just giving an example like that you can denote with a thickness also what that particular element is and what its functionality is with the help of line thickness clear or should i repeat everyone is clear right Oh, clear. Yes, sir. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Now, one more thing. I just draw a line like this. I'll draw one more line. For this line, what I do is, I'll just select this uh, zigzag line, and I'll take this thickness of like this. I try to draw. Like this, you can see this zigzag line. This is. Total length. I try to move both these things together, like nearby. You can see this is exact length. This is a total length, and uh, I'll just uh, color it also. I'll give uh, say blue color. Now, I want this line to be converted. This line to be converted as this line. Now I have drawn this line by mistake or uh, by other cause, or I have in imported this line from other project. Let's say. now this is what actual drawing line is i want all the properties of this line to be transferred or copied to this line that is called matching properties so you have certain properties of for a, a, an object and there is another object you want this properties of this object to be transferred to this object 
Okay, how you do is select this line or circle or anything. So you want this object, uh, uh, this properties to be transferred to this to this object. You have to go for match properties. There is shortcut also. I just select the first object which, which is already selected. As soon as I select second object, you can see it has become like the first object. Let's uh, try to draw for circles also. Let me just give one more example. I'll uh, take normal line. See enter. Thirty. I'll just try to draw one more circle, which is something of bigger size. Size will not change. Okay, remember, I will give this red color, and I will give this something like similar color. Yellow. Color. Now I want yellow color to be applied for this circle as well. Not only color. If you have a different line type also, let's say I have dotted line. So this is dotted line. This is normal line. Whatever the properties of this smaller circle is there, right? I want that properties to be transferred to this bigger circle. I have to simply go for MA. That is match properties. Select this first circle. From which you have to transfer the properties. Select this second circle. Automatically, this properties will be imparted on the next circle. Likewise, you can uh, practice for any other object. Not only object. If there are multiple objects, also. Let me draw a rectangle. Let me draw a circle. Let me draw. A A polygon with five sides, something like this. So I will uh, give different colors to different elements so that we can differentiate. Let me yellow. So I want yellow to be applied for all these others. What I can do is I can just go for match properties, select. This first object, whichever you want to transfer, hit on all the other objects. Automatically, you have transferred or uh, shared this, these properties of this particular element to all the other elements. That is the use of match properties. This is this comes handy like when you work on something and uh, you copy it somewhere else, or you have to. Uh, change the colors or line types of others by seeing one color. You can just hit match property instead of uh, repeating the command multiple times or doing uh, the work multiple times. What you can do is just do this. You can just go for match properties and whoa, select everything at once and change. Okay, so that's uh, that saves a lot of time for you. So now one more important concept that is uh, we have covered. Properties, line types, line weights, line colors, and match properties. We have seen what line types is and what uh, different functions of different line types are. So the next more most important topic is layers. So this layers first. Let us imagine. Uh, everyone knows uh, carbon copies, right? Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, like uh, stencils, whenever you, you are uh, try to copy the same matter to multiple uh, papers, what we do is we'll uh, uh, place a paper of, of carbon copy and then write on that. So it will be uh, whatever we write on that will be copied down. Right? Similar way, so you have to imagine this as multiple carbon copies or multiple layers of the same page. So whatever you draw in this page. Whatever you draw on this page, whatever you draw on this page will be finally visible for us like the completed image. This is what we see. But what you can do is in AutoCAD, like for example, you are drawing walls. You can draw the walls in something called a layer. Okay. You can draw your electrical connections or all the other settings in one layer. And you can draw your furniture and all the furniture related equipments in one layer. And then everything combined, you have your floor plan. In terms of mechanical, you say you can draw your dimension in one particular setting, one particular layer. You can draw in actual components in one particular layer. 
and then you can draw hidden lines or something like that in one particular layer all the elements combined what you have is a final drawing so in future what happens for the like, let's say in this example what happens is you want a drawing without a furniture what you will do is you simply switch off this furniture layer everything else will be visible in the project except for this furniture layer and then for example let's say you don't want to uh, see the electrical drawings in your current project what you can do is instead of erasing all the things to electrical layer you can simply simply switch off this electrical layer in your project so you can see all the others except that electrical layer for example let's say you don't want to see the walls in your project for temporarily so it will be there in your project but it will not be visible in that given view okay so instead of erasing everything or uh, copying this somewhere else or editing this what you can do is you have to create a separate uh, entity called layer for all the elements related to that particular uh, aspect and then you you can uh, move that to that given layer so for some some instances if you don't want to see that you can turn on and off for any layer okay that is a, a, a brief introduction of layers a layer command is used to control and manage the drawings in autocad as i've said you can manage any given line in autocad with a simple on and off switch in order to do that you have to first assign a particular layer to that object or line or circle whatever it is okay the layer also increases the display performance of autocad because like say you are having multiple elements in your drawing or multiple uh, figures in your drawing you can, by turning on and off what you can do is you can see whatever that is required for you for that instance and also it it will make your drawing lighter when you work you will not be confused so that's the uh, advantage of having layers i'll just show an architecture file also for example so uh, that will be our, our last topic for today so where our layers will be here it will be here always remember there is something called zero over here right zero will be your default layer in autocad as soon as i uh, drop down so we have a uh, we have selected a new template right and whenever you select any new template you will be uh, uh, by default greeted with a zero layer zero layer is permanent layer in autocad and you cannot delete this layer this whatever you draw draw before creating any new layer will be on zero layer and zero layer is a permanent layer just try to remember and then if you want to create a new layer for our requirement just go to layer properties so you have layer properties over here and then if you want to create a new layer hit new over here new layer so if you want to create a uh, say wall i will type wall for that layer and you can see the color we have seen color over here right before uh, drawing itself we can assign a particular color for that layer let's say our walls are of green color so somewhat and then the line type we have discussed line type also right so continuous is fine for me and i have drawn only wall if you are uh, just try to double click that you can type outer wall like this and what i want is i want my outer wall to be somewhat thicker than my inner wall okay i'm just uh, giving a sample layer and then i will create one more layer i like just try to draw it as inner wall and the line weight should be of default let's say 0.09 mm so uh, with these two properties i have to draw an inner wall slightly lighter color i'll go uh, with a slightly lighter color okay we have drawn two wall or we have uh, created two layers you can just close this layer property and now we are in the default layer in order to draw any specific layer related items we have to choose that given layer so if you are drawing outer wall let's say just go for outer wall 
I will quickly take rectangle. I'll just draw something like this. And I will offset it. Say. I'll just give this distance. So this is my outer wall of my building. And let's say I just want an inner wall starting from this direction from here to here. Now I should not draw inner wall in outer walls layer. I have to choose inner walls layer. And then I'll go for line. So let's say we have uh, drawing a line in this direction or here. You can see the line has changed. O enter. I'll just try to offset this line. I'll guess I'll give uh, the same distance. You can see there is a variation in line types. OK, uh, if you see if you uh, think that uh, line types should be changed, just go to line properties and you can still reduce. Its line weight. It will automatically be changed. Hurry, enter. OK, so likewise you can choose any layer so that it has its reflection in our properties and also by seeing this color we can say okay this is outer wall this is inner wall like that in between also you can fill that that will be covered in hatches uh, topic so i just wanted to have a brief introduction for layers so this is the main functionality of layers so with layers what happens is you can assign any given functionality to our layers and let's say now in this project i don't want to see my outer walls how do you switch off this? You can just go to layer properties. If you want to switch off the outer layer, outer walls, just turn off this bulb. All the outer layer, outer walls in your project will be gone from your display only. It will be there in your project, but it will be not visible in your viewport, whatever we are seeing. So again, if you want to see this, turn on. Okay, it's as simple as that. Now there are two options here. I'll just try to drag here like this. So if you can see over here, there is something called uh, as a symbol of light bulb, and there is something called as as a symbol of uh, like sun. So one is turning on and off a layer, the other one is freezing a layer. So what is the difference? This there is the same functionality. Like say if, if I turn off this freezing it will be gone so then why have they given two options one is turning on and off a layer the other one is freezing a layer that's simple if you switch on or off a layer what happens is it is going to stay in the project even in the freezing also it is going to stay in the project but when you switch off it in freezing what happens is it will stop its rendering function the system will stop its rendering function and whatever the memory system is going to use on that particular layer, it will stop, which means the performance of your PC will increase. So this uh, will be affected when you have a large project. Then only you see the effects of freezing. So if you are having a, like a small project with uh, say this much of uh, space is there, or like like say a project is of total of 10 MB or 12 MB, you will not see much of an effect between freezing and turning on and off a layer. But if your project is say 20 MB, 50 MB, 100 MB, there will be projects beyond 100 MB also. For those projects, if you turn or on and off this particular freeze element, what happens is that whole uh, layer will be frozen, which means a uh, system will not uh, use any of its memory or RAM to uh, make functionality of that particular layer, uh, which ultimately improves our performance of our system. So AutoCAD, what happens is once you uh, uh, try to utilize it to the maximum potential, it slows sometimes, it will be stuck sometimes, it will close with errors sometimes. So in order to avoid those uh, situations, we can freeze those layers, whichever layers we, if we find not important to that current workflow, we can freeze them. That will be there in the project, but that will not be using any memory. If you turn off that, it will be there in the project again, but it will be uh, using your memory, 
but uh, it not be displayed in the given view okay and one more setting is so as i said whatever we do ultimately our aim should be it should be printed so if i switch on this plot or off this plot that will not be visible it will be visible in our project but that will not be visible once you take the print out so this will see when we uh, uh, take print outs or pdfs of our project so in order to uh, make any layer to be visible in the print you have to always turn on the plot so once you have to check it once uh, you switch off this in the plot it will be visible in our project but it will not be visible in the print the final print so always make sure that whatever layers you want to be printed it should be in the plot uh, in the plot it should be turned on okay clear so you can create any layers like uh, any layer if you want to delete that select that layer you can delete over here delete layer that layer will be gone so this is not deleted because you can see there is an error because the layer has certain options like a, a wall is there now let's try to delete the layer it is gone because that layer does not have any um, objects or functionaries so in order to delete any layer it should not have any thing present in that given layer you have to uh, remember that point also so if you want to create new layer just always you can go to uh, new layer option and create so here if you want to uh, freeze this uh, new layer by default so this may not be useful for uh, for us for most of the time because we are creating new layer to create new component so if you want to create new layer by default in a frozen state you have to go for this option okay so by default what we have to do is just go for new layer creation you have to rename your layer and in the on and on and off we have to switch on and off accordingly and then you have to always make sure that whatever the layer we are going to plot it you have to uh, switch on in the plot and then whatever the color we are giving we can select in the color line type here so line type if i switch on this line type there will be like three or four uh, types if you want to, uh, to load more line types just go for load and like say for example there are a certain load types that are not present here but your company has already made them just go for five so that will be in dot line type format so those you have to browse it in your company directory or you can download uh, different line types from uh, online you can load that here you can uh, browse it from wherever the location is hit open that will be present over here then you can choose it from here like say for example this is what i have chosen that will be displayed in our line types properties again we don't see everything over here because we don't want to burden our software with all the unnecessary inputs so we will import only things that are necessary to us so that our file size is uh, compared to is smaller so for this uh, layer let's say i just wanted to select this particular line type select that hit okay now we can change the color also okay by default i just close it by default if i select this layer it will show so here uh, here it's not showing because i selected by layer the line type also is plain as you can see as per the layer if you are selecting something you have to again select it as per the layer now you can see i have selected layer 1 and i have given properties of layer 1 as center and the line weight is default if i change the line weight over here you, you can see the increased or decreased line weight as per your uh, settings so that's what uh, a layer setting is so this is one of the important concept and uh, please try to make your uh, time and uh, try to revise this concept that is layers and uh, this match uh, this whatever we have seen over here you don't have to uh, concentrate much on this because everything over here will be covered in our layer properties but say you don't uh, want to create new layers 
but you have to only work on your zeroth layer which is default layer then only you have to go for these properties or else every other thing for every other thing you have to create layer and in the layer itself you can create line types line weights for our understandings or for our uh, like a uh, betterment of our understanding they have added these properties and also most of this uh, uh, options in autocad are redundant like uh, earlier in uh, as we we've, uh, we've said this multiple times 2004 or 2005 it used to be a uh, command based uh, software then these op options did not exist so they have autodesk has acquired many 3d version of softwares from those 3d version of software they they have copied multiple items so these and uh, like these settings and there are multiple settings in autocad also like uh, quick dimensions and stuff like that they have copied and they have kept the original also so that is why we have we are seeing like same option multiple times so you don't have to worry about these things when you know what these are okay i think uh, with this uh, let me uh, end my session so you can uh, ask any doubts if you are having